Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family. We chose this one. This episode 379, Shaky Shivers from 2022. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too. And this episode is brought to you by Ice Cream Cult. Ice Cream Cult is an electronic artist and instrumental hip hop producer based in the Pacific Northwest. Shout, check him out on Spotify or YouTube. Shout out to Ice Cream Cult. He actually makes some pretty cool like hip hop mashup type chill wave type stuff actually it's like stuff did you know him before he reached out to sponsor the show or did he did you discover him through his sponsor of the show it it was his sponsorship for sure but like i actually listened to the song i was like this actually sounds like stuff that joey and i would listen to in the background of doing other shit so shout out to ice cream cult just shout out to ice cream cult seriously and happy halloween this is our halloween episode we should theoretically quote unquote should be starting lap 15 today but that'll be next week we'll have brian late night slumber party rodriguez on that episode to complete his out of order lap and one twice one twice maybe he has to do a second lap to cover up for him doing an episode twice that we forgot about he would and it would make my life easier but i don't want him on back on every episode i'd rather talk about another nonsense not not fast and furious it almost worked out perfectly this is a throwback to the 90s if it was a throwback to the 80s it'd be like it kind of is 80s like they're kind of doing it is but they're doing 80s, but in the 90s, yeah. but in the 2020s. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So this is Shaky Shivers. This is Sung Kang's directorial debut. Two young women find themselves in an abandoned camp in the woods with a book of magical spells surrounded by classic monsters in this comedic send-up of 80s horror films. Available right now on Prime and also a bunch of like Tubi and Pluto and Voodoo and all those places. You also, watch it's like it's like free on YouTube. It, like you rent it on Prime and rent it on somewhere else, but like it's fully free on YouTube. Is it somehow? ironic at all that it was no. so hard to watch last year and now it's just like where don't you want to see it? Yeah. So last yeah. so here's here is the the thing. So last year This is twenty twenty two release. Well end no, so it was finished in twenty two, but it released in twenty three. So last September there yes. was a one night only Fathom Events release, and it was also on Screenbox that same night. So whether you went to a theater It wasn't on Shutter. It wasn't Shutter, it was Screenbox. So it's the same okay, it's a similar thing, weird. but it's the same yeah, same Okay. But not that one. No, not Shutter, Screenbox. But it was on Screenbox for one night only and Fathom Events, which does, like, the Broadway things, and, like, the, they showed Rad this summer or whatever. And and Joey and I were like, okay, cool, like, you know, it's going to stream that one night, and we'll just watch it after that, yep. and then go ahead. <laughs> well, so I was saying to you that, like, every Hooptober, there's the rules that you have to make your list, and then there are always yep. three bonus movies, and one of them was, last year, Shaky Shivers, and it's like, here's a promo code for a free month or a free week or whatever of Screenbox, Yep. Use it to sign up and watch Shaky Shivers. And I was like, cool. And I don't know if I saw the September 21st date or not, but I was like, okay, like it's coming out this month. It'll be around, whether it's going to be, you know, in theaters or on Prime or on Screenbox or on Shutter or. And we're like, dude, all these movies, this looks like it's straight to stream. So like they might do a release and then we're just going to get it on VOD immediately. And. But it was one night only and then nowhere for a couple months. For months, months and months, like almost a year, right? I don't know when it actually returned. I can look at like letterboxed reviews, but like it was not it available. It was gone for a while. We tried to do it, was not available back online at least as of Halloween last year because I wanted to do it last year. We couldn't do it last year. So like there was at least a couldn't. month where like it wasn't. It. Yeah. So directed by Sung Kang, who obviously does only this movie, but he also has, you know, as we've seen for a couple of years now, that untitled initial D film that he's working on. Yeah, they keep saying this, but we never hear. We just keep hearing that it's coming, but there's no updates kind of situation. Right. Yeah. Also, if you don't recognize the name, even though you should recognize the name, because if you're listening to podcasts, he plays Han in the Fast and Furious, as it is claimed yeah, fame. Why we're covering it. Yeah. Written by Andrew McAllister and Aaron Strongoni, who there's not much about them. They have not really written other movies. I have info on them because I'll, I'll explain why I did more research than normal in a minute. Produced by okay. Brian Yang, Lucy Kim, and Gene Shim, who basically have produced nothing much of note. Like, it seems like maybe just Han Sung's friends, possibly. Sure, maybe. He's doing a little Justin Lin going on here. Shot by Remy Tournois, who also has not shot anything else. Budget can't find a budget um when i googled shaky shivers budget the ai overview says 
The budget for Shaky Shivers, directed by Sung Kang, is not available, but here's some information about the budget for a similar film, Shivers, from 1975. And it's like, Google, that's not even close. It's got Shivers in the title. Yeah. That doesn't help me. Yeah, well, at least we know the robot overlords aren't going to take over tomorrow. No. That's Box all office, I can feel good about. none. Nothing of note. Who knows what it was the, streaming for one night. Who knows yeah. what the Fathom Events did. Rotten Tomatoes has a 73% after 11 Interesting. critics. It has okay. 75% by the audience, but there's a note that I've never seen before. Fewer than 50 reviews. So just like, it's pretty good, but like, it's not a lot of people. Tem- temper, your, temper your expectations. Mm-hmm. There is no critical consensus, and there's no Metacritic score, which is only available after four reviews. So I don't know who these 11 critics were who rated it on Rotten Tomatoes, but apparently not four of them are Metacritic-approved reviewers, because Metacritic does not have a consensus review. Interesting. Okay, so again, nobody's really seen this movie. There is, though, a crazy credit. Okay. Do you know what it is? Is is it just the post-credit scene? There, like the spoiler scene? in all capital letters. There is a post-credit scene in which Bigfoot use, not uses, use, his free ice cream coupon. Zero up, zero down. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, crazy credit. That was a cool part of the movie. That was a nice touch, but okay. I have a so, question about the end. Um, go ahead. Well, when we get oh. to the end, I have a question about the end. We were gonna because we I was the, gonna ask if you wanted to start there. We first got to the credits, because... and then I was just like, "Is this?" A, no, it's not. But okay. We, well, let's start there in a second. Let me let me do the quick backstory that I have so far as I have it. Okay, keep going. This is the first movie we have covered on this podcast, and one of maybe very few, if any, in the like history of me doing research the way that I've done it, where there's no wiki page for the movie. That's a good sign. It's listed on Sun Kang's, obviously, but it's not linked. It's not blue. You can't click on it. Nothing. There's also zero trivia listed on IMDb. Makes sense. That makes sense. People have seen this. Like, this is a movie that was made. But my yeah. two sources for research had nothing. So I was like, okay, let me read a couple of interviews with Sun Kang. Okay. Because Bloody Disgusting did one, and this website called Casting Networks, which I've never heard of, also spoke to him. And we're basically just like... Why this movie? Like, that's the, that's the question. Just like, why this? Like, of everything, okay. why this? Does he, and he has an answer. He has an answer. Sure. Okay. And, like, the two different interviews, and I also skimmed a third. He gives the same answers to everybody. Like, it's just like, this is the story he's telling. This is He was running a press yes. junket. Yeah, he's sticking to this. Okay. Why this movie? Why this script? Quote, we made this movie during the pandemic, and I thought my first directorial debut would be a film that was coming of age and more dramatic. But everyone was going through a tough time, and I just wanted to laugh. When I read Shaky Shivers, it checked those boxes off. Andy and Aaron, the guys who wrote the movie, love, love horror films. And what they love about it is the practical makeup effects that went into the creature building of that era. Things are being replaced by technology so that artistry and craftsmanship are slowly dying out. And he also talks about how Andy and Aaron, one of them has like a nine-year-old daughter and wanted to show her a horror movie, but everything was too gross or too this or too that or whatever. So he's like, I want to make a a horror movie that my nine-year-old can watch. That's an excellent framing for this film. Yes, that that makes sense. I can see the vision. He was asked, how long have you wanted to direct? And he said, since I was a little kid, when I saw Goonies, I told myself, this is what I want to be doing. For the rest of my life, I want to tell stories. I want to make movies that inspire other children to take adventures into the woods and look for treasures to imagine to go and play pretend. As an actor, I don't think I've been able to spread my wings in roles I yearn to play, and it's dis on Han, I guess. And instead of waiting for the phone call that's never going to happen, I realize I have to forge ahead and start taking the onus and make these stories happen myself. So that quote is going to come into play bigly when we get to the end of this movie. They also said, why this project? Are you a horror guy? He said, you know, I mentioned The Goonies, but also An American Werewolf in London was an inspiration, The Evil Dead films, A Nightmare on Elm Street. All the horror films from the 80s were definitely part of my VHS Rolodex. This is a silly Tarantino mashup of all scary movies, is what this movie comes down to. And the only... Actually, I'm going to save this for later. I'm going to save one more quote for later. So, yeah, do you want to start at the end? What do you want to say about the end? I want, I, want to, I want to start with my preface today that Rachel and I watched this movie last night. Yeah. And I said, I really don't know if Joey is going to love or hate this movie. And then we got to the end, and I said, I am positive Joey hates this movie. What about the ending that you think I hated? Sung Kang playing like a racist caricature of himself. Oh, by that point. By choice. That was a fucking choice. If he said he hasn't played the characters that he wants to play, and like that's how the movie ends with a cameo of him doing like 
the most stereotypical Asian weird accent that he can with a lazy eye. Like that's that's the character you choose for. Like you're not the cop. Or we even said like if he was Bigfoot, right? Mm. Like that you didn't see him. That he's in costume, but he's like Bigfoot with Sung Kang the whole time or something like that. Like that's funny, right? And like oh, interesting. You get a cameo. Nobody really knows. It's cool. But then he chose to add a character we haven't seen throughout the entire film and comes in with an accent. Well, he's driving early on, right? In the opening credits, isn't he driving? Is that him driving? Sure. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, we don't know what he looks like, what he sounds like. I, I knew so early on in the movie when when uh, Lucy's talking about her ex, Roger, I had seen, because there's only like seven actors in the movie. Okay, and I was yeah. like clicking on them, and I knew that Sung played Roger. And I'm like, okay, so they're talking about him. They're like, oh, a dungeon master. Like, I knew he was kind of like a nerd. Yes. Yeah. I, I knew that he was in the movie. But then when we get to him, I was like, you chose this? That's what I'm saying. You're the director of this movie. So it's not like he was like, okay, he cashed a check. This was the 90s. Like, did he have to go back into 90s mindset to cast himself as a racist Asian character? I don't or, understand. Or that what? also didn't impact the way that I saw this movie. It did. Okay. What, what, did you did like you this and movie Rachel, or not? Well, first, did you and Rachel like this? We did. We thought it was like silly. Like this was like silly spoop. It was fully spoop. S P O O P. Right. Like it's not scary. It's just a silly, stupid movie. I agree with you a hundred percent. I was thinking like this is a movie that you could show like kids that are like six or seven, and it would be like scary. But it's not really right. Like there's nothing like super gross, super bad about it. Like it's fine. I think. I don't have children, so maybe that's a bad recommendation, but... I don't know. Like, I think that there is... There's a genuine there's a charm to friendship it. between Lucy and Karen. I think that there is something really... It's cute. ...good there. Yeah. I don't yes. think it's particularly funny, and I don't think it's particularly scary, and I don't think that, like, it's a good... It, I don't think it's a well-made movie. Like, I think it's... Nope. None of these things. I agree with you on all these points. And I was just like, you kind of... It just feels like you want to make Book Smart, but if Book Smart was, like, a direct to dvd horror movie kind of well that's because she is like generic uh bd what's her name bd feldstein yeah little jonah Hill. yeah she's 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 so great value bd feldstein it's like palpable like you that's the first thing i thought it's like i'm an overweight girl who has all the sass in the world and i'm gonna tell you how it really is it's like oh. and she looks like bd feldstein mm -hmm. a lot yeah i started not liking their friendship and then sort of toward the middle like they won me over but like the rest of this I don't like. I mean, it's fine. I don't. I don't like the movie. I don't think it's good. I'm not gonna watch it again. But I also didn't hate it. And I also like the Han thing, the, the Roger cameo. I didn't hate it, but I was just like, this is so weird. That we had we had an out of body experience. Like when we when we got to the end, I rewound we, like, it because I'm like, this can't. We we exactly we paused, we discussed, and then we rewound and made sure that what we saw was what we saw. And I and then I watched it again this morning. To just to triple check that what I thought happened happened, because mm -hmm. it was a fucking choice, mm -hmm. like we said. So he's shirtless with a vest over, talking with a lisp, bandana, a lazy eye, a lazy, lazy eye, eye, doing like finger guns, but also like a weird Asian accent, kind of. No one in the three interviews that I read, or the two that I read, and the one or two that I skimmed, asked him about that. So I have no, I have no answers about that. I wish I, I if wish I, I met Sun Kang, I would like to know his inspiration for Roger and why he why he chose to be that character. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. But yes, I'm with you. And, and we ultimately like Rachel and I at the very end, we said this would have done really well as a TV miniseries a la Goosebumps 20 minute episodes because the movie actually kind of acts like that, too. It's like there's like the werewolf part and then like the zombie part and then like supernatural part. You know what I mean? Like demons and like these it like it follows these things. And if these were like 20 minute episodes that were like more leaning towards children, I think that this would have been like a really fun Netflix series that nobody would have watched either. Well, so especially. Si oh, by the way, I saw a thing today on Bloomberg that hold on. I want to get the exact title. This is about Netflix. The new Netflix movie strategy, colon, make better movies. Like, that's just, like, we're going to make better movies. Like, that's how we're going to win this. It's like, oh, your idea to make better movies... Just do good. Is just to do simply good. make better movies. Okay. 
they're like, we want to we want to make fewer movies and spend less money and be more selective. It's like, oh, so what you should have been doing. Yeah. So I think what I will say in terms of the like mini series, I think like a four part, especially since it's like in each of them, there's just like, well, this is the werewolf one and this is the zombie one. And then this is the Bigfoot one. And then this is like the cult one kind of. Yeah, kind of. There's like a whole bunch of cult shit that shows up at the end. Yeah. This movie is very barely 82 minutes long. It, it's breezy. I it's also quick. assumed, wrongly so, that there was going to be like nine minutes of credits. There's only like three or four. Like, it's a normal amount of credits. It is, yeah. But there is a thing that reminds me of Birdemic, which is one of the worst movies ever been made. Like, that's known to be one of the worst movies ever made. Where that opening credit scene of, I think it's Sung Kang driving his car, is just... I thought it was the girls driving the car. Maybe, okay. but somebody's driving, and you just see them driving for three minutes, and it's like, oh, you really just need to pad out. You need to hit eighty minutes in any way you can. Oh, okay, that's what you're. Oh, that makes sense, Joey. I didn't think about that. Okay, yes, you're right. It does start very slow. They like hit the gate, and then they just like pull up to the thing. Yes, because the weirdest thing to me, like the thing that I really don't like about movies, and we talked about this before, but it didn't like, like this did this thing, and then did another thing, and I was just like, hold on, what? is this movie starts with Lucy and Karen in the car just sort of talking shit, right? And you quickly learn Karen is convinced she's going to turn into a werewolf. Tonight, yes. We see her, and it doesn't happen. And then we turn away, and it seemingly does happen, but we don't really see it. Well, well, like, they're waiting there in the car. Uh, she's like, br- she brings a gun. She's like, look, if, it t- if I turn into a werewolf, shoot me. Somebody comes up to the side of the driver's side car and is like, spook, and a werewolf cost, like, fake Halloween big bad wolf and mask. And Lucy shoots him in the head. Shoots him in the head, and it turns out it's their co-worker. And then turns back, and Karen is seemingly a werewolf. We don't see it, you're right, but yeah, seemingly a werewolf. And then we go one day earlier, and I was like, don't do this, I hate this, don't do this. I know you hate this, I, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying, so like, I was, but so then, I'm watching this. Like, 20 minutes later, we catch up again. And I'm like, hold on. Yep, yep. We didn't do the we didn't do the whole movie the night before. We catch up. Yeah. This is not the film's climax. This is just like the kind of beginning of the movie. Like things like Don't Breathe, which is made by Fetty Alvarez, who made the new Alien Romulus movie and whatever. Like it opens with a girl like running away from like a creepy old guy, and like that's yes. the climax of the movie. Like they build back up to that point. Here it's like, hey, we'll be back in twenty minutes. It's like, and well, they come back, yeah. Why, why, why do it? Well, because it starts you at a good place in the movie. I think that's a much more interesting place than at the ice cream shop. I mean, well, I guess the old creepy lady could have been an interesting place to start too. They could just start at the ice cream shop. You're right. I don't know. It's very strange though. So we find the, the ice cream shop. They work at an ice cream shop. Yes, which is the friendly freeze, and. This girl walks in and is so mean to them because she's like the mean girl kind of from high school, but also like class president or something. Because she's like, you were senior vice president. And I, th- now you're working here. I'm like, I don't think that like. She's cousin of the the, the penis ice skating twins, or twins whatever, yeah, who the won penis silver. twins. Yeah. But like this girl is like, you were class senior vice president and you're working in an ice cream store. I thought you had great things ahead of you. She's like, I don't think that like running for class council and like actual career success is at all connected i think it might be i think it might be come on we watched the movie election joey you don't think l woods is doing good she went to harvard after that well it depends on if you read the book or if you watch the movie oh, okay. but there's also a sequel coming out they wrote the sequel book but they also have the sequel movie coming out tracy flight can't win oh, cool but that girl like loves high school and she's just like huh. and then she's got a coupon that expired in the 80s which is very strange my question about the ending though and she comes back and is given a shaky shiver. Well, okay. So she pays for ice cream. They take her money. They go to the yes. back. And we'll talk about the shaky shiver because I have a quote about that too. But they give her a shaky shiver and they say, it's on the house. It's like, no, it's not on the house. She paid for ice cream. She already paid. Yeah. The shaky shiver is free, but she also paid for whatever raspberry thing she wanted and you didn't give her. But okay. This is more of, this is more of like an upgrade. She got a free. Uh, it's not on the house. Right. It's you, we free upgraded you to the to the deluxe. And Karen is like, I really wish I could have cast a sl- spell on that slut bag. And Lucy's like, oh, look what I got. And she pulls out a, a spell page. I'm like, this yes. is these are two useless spells. She's like, no, it's on the back. But we don't know what's on the back. So we don't know what happened to her. And then there's the post credit scene, which I thought was going to be her coming back as like some kind of creature. And it's just Bigfoot. I was like, well, why did you set up 
like what's going to happen with this woman and not pay it off like that was weird to me and in between it's those never... in between the woman leaving and bigfoot and the credits is sun gang so like there's a lot going on there at the end like the last like five and a half minutes but like yeah i don't there is. i don't understand like we don't know what spell they cast on her right no, and then, well, they, they just distract you with Sun Kang's character, yep. and then Bigfoot shows up, and then that's the end of the movie. Yeah. I don't think we really needed the confirmation. It's like, oh, they're going to do something evil to her. They have spells, Joey. Like, I don't think that that's, like, important, but it's also dumb to add at the end of the movie and also, not could, wrap up. You could up. do the same thing by being like, oh, we got, we, I, got, I got her under control, and, like, just, like, tap the piece of paper or whatever. Like, the fact that they spend, like, a minute reading the piece of paper, it's like, no, no, and no. And then flipping flip it over. It over. And you still don't know what it says. Yes. So Karen has the shaky shiver, which is a milkshake, which looks disgusting. It looks like shit. And she shit herself in school. And mm-hmm. that's like her her backstory. Her character story is that she shit herself at cross country one time because she ate Mexican food and nobody forgot it. So a shaky shiver like a milkshake shitter. Like, is that the pun? No, I think just, like, Shaky Shivers is just alliteration, and it's, like, spooky Halloween-themed thing. I don't know. It's like... also a strange thing to name your movie after a milkshake. Yeah. So here's the quote about Sun, that Sun Kang gave about the Shaky Shiver. Please. Oh, I want to hear this. Because when I was reading this, I was just like, oh, no, I might hate this I've movie al- for I've this. Always, I've, always, I've always dreamed of shit milkshakes. Quote, my description to the prop department was, please make it look like diarrhea. I remember it was so pretty at the beginning. They're like, cherry whipped cream. And I say, no, 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 no. It can't be that. It has to literally look and sound like diarrhea. If you turn up the volume, he says, the shaky shiver actually farts constantly. We added, I think, 120 farts throughout the film that are hidden. And the shaky shiver just constantly farts throughout. That was a really fun to go into a sound library and look for different types of farts, like wet fart, strong fart, right? Yeah. I don't know what the exact recipe was. It would be, but it just needs to look like a diarrhea. I think it works. It looks nasty, huh? What? Like, Sun Kang is like 12 years old. I mean, yeah, that's cool. But, like, you're doing the press junket and this is, like, what you're stoked about? Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Like, you name the movie after, but, like, it has nothing to do with the movie. No. Like, it's not like they save the day or, like, the shaky shaver secret ingredient is, like, Bigfoot shit. Yeah. It's just of those ice things. cream that looks gross, but it still is ice cream. You just remi- you unlocked a weird memory in my brain that now I need to express. When I was a very small child and computers only had floppy disk drives. Mm-hmm. I remember one, somebody that my mom worked with gave me a program that was just fart sounds. Sweet. On like a soundboard. And I was like, yeah, this is, because you know, remember, like you just saying like wet, long fart. Mm-hmm. Like it mm-hmm. had like all of these things and you could just click them in like those old school programs that were like one box, six buttons, and it would just be fart sounds. Do you remember... What? And I try. I never got it because I tried to once, and I was like, "Oh, this is almost certainly a virus." Do you remember there used to be programs that you could install that would have like a stripper dancing on your Windows taskbar? Oh no! There was like, you know, like an inch or two tall on your screen, down by like where the clock is. I don't know how I saw it. Like it must have been like on a video somewhere, or like some pop up ad that was just like install candy to your computer, or whatever. And like I tried to. Okay. And, like, even like eleven years old, I was like oh, no, this is not good for my computer. Like, I knew that this was not this good. This is going to be bad, I yeah. tried once, but I never got one. But it was, like, a little, like, inch or two tall stripper that would just, like, spin around a pole. But it was basically, like, just a little video that would play, I guess, constantly. Like, one GIF. It was one GIF yeah. that's just on loop. Task bar stripper. Do they make these now? I don't know. I would also would not download them today. I think that's also a terrible idea. No, it's just pictures of vaginas. I was looking for, like, one... That is like you look. So, you sound so disappointed. No, I'm only seeing pictures of vaginas. Yeah, I was because I was looking for like a it, eye like, dancer in terms on of like ten year old coolest thing in the world, like fart sound oh, effects or fuck, stripper. Yes. Oh yeah, GIF on your screen. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, you can just buy. You can buy like weird porn games. I guess now. No, but I want like just like a tiny stripper that just like lives on my taskbar. That's hilarious to me. Yeah. 
This movie also does another thing that I don't like, which is what they do in Titanic and a bunch of other movies where it's like, oh, I thought you were going to be a hairstyle. I thought you were going to open your record. I thought you were going to have a blanket with arms. I thought you were going to have people drive each other around in cars. It's like, okay, so she predicted Snuggie and Uber and like Lucy doesn't believe that they're good ideas. It's like, yeah. Yeah, and we know that they're, oh, look at them now. Everybody's got yeah. a Snuggie. I never had I do one. somewhere. I have a Vikings one somewhere that I got. But I'm I just like Rachel has like a, a U Miami one somewhere. It just feels like so lazy to be like, oh, like oh, this Picasso will never amount to anything. It's like, okay. yes, 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 yes. I I'm a hundred percent with you, Joey. We do we we've we've experienced you being grumpy about that for, through many movies mm-hmm. <laughs> when they're like, wonder who he's gonna be one day, and you're like, yeah, it's. I think that's the thing. Like, I would have hated this movie if it like give me if it gave me new reasons to hate it, but it just gave me reasons to hate it that like I've already hated like ten of the movies, and I just don't have the energy to like full out hate this movie. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like oh. So you don't you don't actually hate this movie? No, I don't think it's right? good. It's fine. But I hate it. Yeah, it's, it's just fine. it's just silly. It's just like a silly, stupid movie. Sun Kang got to make a dumb movie. Did you think the maybe homeless witch question mark was gonna be someone that mattered? But she's just like a lady that shows up sometimes to the ice cream shop and causes some havoc. (laughs) Uh, I had no idea because it because it's at one point I didn't know if all of these stories were actually going to be connected or if they were just trying to hit every major monster Mm -hmm. in one movie. Mm -hmm. She just shows up sometime and causes havoc. But that's not what I I thought she I thought she could I thought she could have left after the first one and I'd have been fine with it. Well, she shows up. And it's like, I want free ice cream. And the girls are like, get lost, weirdo. And then, Get lost, weirdo. It's closed. And like the ice cream's put away. Beat it. Which, you know, you can be rude. But like, that's also like a totally normal, like, don't go to a it's, place after it's closed. Yeah. And so she's like, I, I curse you, basically. Right? Like, it's just. Well, she bites her yeah. with her puppet hand. That would be enough. But then the fact that she comes back again later and the owner of the ice cream store is like, Oh, yeah, she came here 20 years ago. I gave her free ice cream, and then she basically created my wife? Yeah, she said she'd leave you alone. She created my wife and gave me, like, 20 years of good times. Yep. And then she's also at the movie at the end. But, like, the wife died of, like, cancer or something, right? Like, never the explained. wife is the dead. Wolf's de- the, they, wife the wife is, is dead. dead. The wife's gone, yeah. But, like, it never explains why, because they're just like, whatever happened to that girl? And he's just like, oh. But then, like, the the homeless witch is, like, there at the end with, like, a, a cult of, like, devil worshippers in white robes and, like, animal masks that as soon as Bigfoot yes. stomps on her, they just, like, walk away and they're gone from the movie. Well, because Bigfoot's in the movie because the guy that owns the ice cream store mm-hmm. was going on vacation in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And his vacation was that he's a Bigfoot hunter. I said to Rachel as I was watching this movie, I think that I would like to spend four to five years making my personality just Bigfoot Hunter. I think that would be a fun excursion for like four or five years that like, I I just want to see you guys all have to explain things like Joe's out at the Bigfoot convention again. And like, he's spent all weekend hiking, looking for Bigfoot. I don't think it would take four or five years. I think if you do it for like three months, you'd be like, all right, I guess that's Joe's thing now. But like, I want to like get into it. I want to be like, like, like we, like, you know, we're the most premier dedicated podcast mm-hmm. for Fast and the Furious. I want to be the most premier dedicated Bigfoot hunter. Sure. Self-appointed th- three to four years until I get bored of it. I think, but you're right. I think I would get bored being outside, like requiring me to be outside. I would get bored of this in like a week and a half. Well, because Bob is like, I know Bigfoot's a thing because my wife said she saw one and why would she lie? And it's like, well, maybe she saw something else. Like She's not lying. It's not like she's just like pranking you. Yeah. I mean, she was right. Let's let's be let's be clear. She was right. There was Bigfoot. Bigfoot exists. Yeah, he exists in this film. Yes, but I guess also like they're like mm, this seems weird. But also, you literally turn into a werewolf. Yes, reanimated a human body to become a zombie. Yes, killed that zombie, became a zombie, reversed the zombie, brought yes. the dead guy who was a zombie, no longer a zombie, back to life for a minute. Oh yeah, they did. They did do the minute the minute spell. What is what is the end joke that he's like? It's a fast and furious minute. No, but I mean, like, I he leaves He leaves on that joke. So, like, yes, Joey just fast-forwarded through some parts of the movie. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if in all a good of way, that happens to you, yeah. Bigfoot exists. Bigfoot exists, yeah, I agree. 
there's no fighting it. But I want to talk about the scene where he's sitting under the tree. Yes. Where they're like, do people fuck in heaven? Who shot JFK? And like, they just ask a bunch of nonsense questions. He's like, uh, I haven't fucked yes. in heaven. I'm going to fucking heaven. Don't worry about that. But also, <laughs> here's what you need to know. And then he just dies again. But what? No, he says something. He's like, do you know, like, it's like essentially like, do you know, you know what Puff Daddy really did? Or like, he's like, who is it? He name drops someone. I forget who it is. Oh, let me bring it up. But it's just like, and they're like, oh, we ruined it. And like, we'll just bring it back. And then like, it's like, you can only do it once. And it's like, oh, okay. You know what my biggest, I, I have something. What was I? I was just watching another movie, Joey, and they had the really tall door handles. And I was thinking about uh, what was it? The well, Christmas better, movie. Better watch out. Yeah, it's an Australian. It's an Australian thing. Yes, I was watching a movie like that, and I was thinking about it. But but as I'm watching this movie, I was still kind of kind of looking for '80s moments, right? Mm-hmm. And I found the most egregious thing I've ever seen in my life: that they go to this camp. Okay, it's been abandoned for years. It is. This movie set in the nineties, right? Mm-hmm. Ninety three in Washington. Yep. It has paddle switches inside the camp on the door. There's no way a camp built that has been abandoned for a decade, so in the eighties, has modern paddle switches on the side of the wall in the campgrounds. I saw those and I, I was instantly taken out. These are this is not real. <sighs> there's there's no way they have these. You know what I'm talking Song, about? We need you to atone for your crimes. He's too worried about the farts in the He's movie. He's too worried about the farts. <laughs> yeah. He says, so you want to hear something incredible? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So John Lennon. Bleh. Oh, that's it. Yeah, John Lennon. Yeah, that's what it was. As far as I know, there are no like real conspiracies about John Lennon. Well, no, there is. Probably maybe they was killed by like the government or something. Yeah, it's something like that. And then like you know, Yoko Ono's involved and she's still alive. I don't know. I know that there is conspiracy theories. I couldn't tell you what they were off the top of my head. So going back to the homeless witch, like there's the there's the girl who hates them. There's also at the what? end she says, "You're worthless. You're a nothing, just like your mother." So it's like so you know well, the, the, mom. No, the mom is no the mom is a through line. Remember? Cause I know, she but says, like this woman knows the mom too. Oh yeah. But we don't know how or why. Because they're in a small town. Everybody knows everyone. Even the homeless witch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the mother is like, there's, there's the, it's the wrong sides of the track, right? It's like the haves and the haves nots. It's like you were showered with love and affection and opportunity. You're and so mom privileged. Showered at, and at the casino or whatever. Casino. Yes, exactly. Her mom's just like a drunk that like essentially lives at the casino. Possibly a prostitute. But yeah, her mother is like the, the, target of derision and scorn for the entire town, including the homeless witch. The issue that I had with the overall with the movies, like it's not like paced well, like it's not funny or scary enough, like off frequently enough. It's just like, they're kind of just hanging out for a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's cause it's a, it's a buddy movie. It's like, it is like a high school coming of age buddy type movie, you know? I mean, I, th- I think really it shows how difficult it is, I think, to make a movie or to edit a movie or whatever, right? It's just like you can have a funny script that you like and actors that you cast and you like. Yeah, I think that it's tough, and I don't think that they did necessarily like a bad job. Like, I think that if they're telling the truth about their directives and what their motives were making this movie, then I think they succeeded in the idea of making like a spoopy movie that you could show to kids that are that is scary, mm-hmm. but isn't too scary. That uses realistic effects and like makeup as opposed to CGI, and it's just generally like silly and eighty three minutes long. Yep. And you're like, okay, yeah, you did a good job. I guess. We've se- uh, come on, J- Joey. You say it too. We've seen a lot worse movies than this. No, I, I, you're right, but also at the same time, it's like, give me something. They thought they did. It was like a nice yeah. little like mashup. I can't disparage this one too much. I think it was like too... no, no, no. And I think it's fine. I think that's like that's that's the issue that I'm having now. It's like if it was it's truly not great. terrible, I would have things to say. But it's just like it's fine. They tried. They the tried. girls are good. Uh, I think the girls are really good. I did they do anything else? No, no. Basically, nobody in this like he talks about casting them, and he's just like I want to make sure I found the right girls, and they were so good, and I loved working with them, and they were down for whatever, and they were like not really grossed out by stuff. They just did whatever I wanted, and like that was like the main thing. And this seems like a bunch of people who like never made a movie before, like made a movie together. Yeah, and I think that they have an opportunity here that they could like I could see uh, great value Beatty being in other movies. I could see 
Karen being in other movies. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. all of these things, I think, well, are about fine. the same. Karen is... Oh, being, sorry. What's yeah, the other one's Lucy. name? Lucy. Yeah. But yeah, so there's other things. I, I sped through it, but Eric, who they accidentally shoot... They, they, she reads the wrong spell and brings him back as a zombie. And then he bites Lucy. Or no, she cut her arm to do the blood transfusion, so she's got an open wound. Well, she, she, thinks, that she thinks that she can fix the vampire... Sorry, fix the werewolf by doing a blood transfusion from the dead corpse of the kid that she shot. Yes. That's their co-worker. With mm-hmm. a paper cup, two straws, and a knife. Mm-hmm. But she's cut too somehow because she, she. No, he cuts her. He, he cuts, cuts her. her. She, yeah, he cuts because he's not dead because he's a zombie. Right. And, and so because his blood gets into her, he scratches her. Yeah. A zombie scratch always. She becomes a zombie. She becomes a zombie. And then th- this part is great though. I like this. This the resolution to this is really funny. That they're just like, just undo the zombie spell. Mm-hmm. Well, there is something funny, I think, about, like, having this spell book that has, like, literal magical capabilities that anybody can read and do the things. You're like, the design's all weird. Like, the arrow's going to the other thing. Like, you read the wrong one. And she's like, oh, yeah, it is it is confusing. This arrow does mm-hmm. go over there. That that on Binder was really funny. It made me, it's so 90s. Like, it's so 90s of, like, different color construction paper yeah. and, like, all of this, like, Trapper Keeper energy. Well, speaking of that, do you have a most 80s moment? Do you have a most 80s pick? I do, I have I have two I think. Okay. When they first mention Roger, like in the ice cream shop, when mm-hmm. she first is like, "Yeah, I know Dungeons and Dragons from my boyfriend Roger, my ex boyfriend Roger, that was a kind of a nerd." And they're like, "Roger, down here, like that." They like mm-hmm. play him a mute, like play him a su- like a sound that feels very eighties to me. Sure. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm like that I do. like? Yep. Because you don't get, like, an announcement. Like, you don't see Roger. They don't, like, cut away or anything like that. But they're just like, Roger. Um, well, also, but, on that same moment, like, Walt spent the entire lot talking about D&D. And, like, D&D is very 80s, too. D- D&D is very 80s as well. Just, like, the inclusion of Roger as, like, obsessed with D&D. Being a dungeon yes. master. Um, but I think that there's, like, near the end, there's, like, really uh, synthy, funky music. And mm, I think that, mm-hmm. like, just synthy music is always very 80s. Sure. I think, like, Ice Cream Shop, like, Malt Shop is 50s, but Ice Cream Shop feels specifically 80s. Ice Cream Shop, well, but they still exist today, but yes, I do agree with you. Ice Cream Shops and, honestly, the camp, too, right? Like, like these kind of, like, summer camp yep. at a thing feels very 80s mm-hmm. as well, just because, like, that's the setting for, you know, Friday the 13th and all of these things, right? It's, like, very, it's like the same camp, so. Yep. Yeah. I think, I mean, the movie is very consciously being, like, we are taking elements of the 80s. We're taking the camp. We're taking the creatures, we're taking this, we're taking that, we're taking the feel, the vibe, the practical effects, making an 80s yes. movie set in 93, made in 2022. Yes, I agree. The weirdest thing to me, though, in all of this, is the homeless witch is doing, like, a Trump impression? At what part? I don't remember this. The way she's just like, you're doomed. Like, she just says, like, things in a way that feel Trumpy. She calls them losers. There's, like, a lot where it's just, like, she's, it, it was, like, one thing was just, like, is it? And then there's, like, two or three I'm just, like, oh, no, it feels like whether it was Sung's choice or her choice or a coincidence, it feels like I'm smarter than you, I know more than you, I'm going to talk down to you, you're doomed. Okay. Like, go back and watch just that one minute before Bigfoot stomps on her, like, her big speech to them. Okay. And just, like, could Trump say this? That makes sense. I mean, it's it's strange. I don't yeah. feel like she's like an '80s villain though, or a '90s villain. It just feels like she's just like a lady in in sticks, a lady that looks like a tree mm-hmm. that has a thing for a hand. Oh, I know her. I did think it was funny that Bob just gives Karen or gives Lucy the, the friendly freeze. He's like, "It's all yours now." That that feels very '80s too. Like I'm, I'm going out of town. I'm retiring, kid. The business is yours. Here's the keys. Pop. See you later. Like I think they're supposed to be like 23, maybe, but they feel like they're 18, and it feels like they're just two girls with no parents. Like, no, we just own this. Is our ice cream shop now? We own this. We run this. That was a very unrealistic part of the movie because if Bob was a true boomer, he would have sold this to Dairy Queen and then complained mm-hmm. for the rest of his life 
I thought you were saying it's, you were making a joke that it's unbelievable <laughs> that these girls would inherit the ice cream store in a movie filled with zombies and werewolves and Bigfoot and blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, but the ice cream store. Mm-mm. No, no. It's just that Bob would have given the ice cream store to a deserving younger member of society without demanding lots back. Yeah. But, you know, he's one of the good ones. Yeah, he is. He likes Bigfoot. He mm-hmm. likes witches. He likes his conjured up wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he had a good time, man. Why was there like a history lesson on Bigfoot that that just like took place in the middle of the movie? I have that as a note. I don't know. We just got like a full history lesson on Bigfoot. I think because they need to hit eighty minutes. That's why I'm. It wouldn't this have been fun as a mini series if it, there would have been like the werewolf episode, and then you come back and it's like now it's the spell book they find it. And then you come back and you're like, okay, now it's the zombie episode. And you come back and you're like, okay, the Bigfoot episode, Bob shows back up. And then you're like, the witch is back. And like your Bob's backstory episode. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Wouldn't this have been a great, like, like I said, like 20, I'm talking 22 minute episodes. You know what I Mm -hmm. mean? And like six of them. You'd have been like, wow. Because it feels like they, they, it feels like they structured the script like that. It does feel like you were saying before, like it feels chunked into like this is the blank monster part of the movie. Um, and then cults at the end, and then right. see you next season. Yep. Back at the ice cream shop, the friendly freeze. It also would have been cool if they did like four different like kinds of 80s things. But also, like, I think. What do you my, mean? I mean, what do like, you mean? I, explain that more because like, I don't understand. Like, we just did like 800,000 like things like Willow, where it's just like these guys, oh, look at Milo. Where's he at? He's right behind you. Yeah, he's mad he can't get into this laundry basket. Like, if they did, like, a, a thing where it's, like, we're, we're trekking through the woods. Like, it's a storybook adventure. And then it's, like, okay, now it's, like, a, it's like a Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Now it's, like, a... Right, yes. Oh, whatever. so you're saying like, thematically like changed, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I would have been down with that. If you were actively trying to invoke every 80s horror movie, every 80s horror trope, whatever, right? Like, if you're trying to be, like, we're doing it all. Like, our goal is to do it all. Then do it all. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And if you had gotten six episodes for it, they could have had, like, zombies in the mall, camp, Silver Lake. You know what I mean? They could have just bang, 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 straight through the thing. I think my big issue, though, with this, and it's not, like, it's not really Sung's fault, but it's, like, I'm kind of tired of 80s nostalgia. Not, like, eight, watching uh, oh. 80s movies. like Not, like, our lap, but just, like... I like I have, like, five episodes of Stranger Things left that I'm just, like, sitting on because I'm just, like, I don't need to watch that. You know what I mean? Just, like kind of milked it like i'd rather do like we're doing 90s or whatever but, like this is what they want they're to pumping evoke. but they're pumping us 90s now you're gonna get burnt out on 90s oh i'm sure really I'm sure. quick but like really really quick yeah do you other notes other thoughts about shaky shivers no i was I, I don't think it's that bad i think sun kang did a decent job i think that the movie's cute like i would i would watch it again not immediately watch it intoxicated probably helps Let's read, Wes wrote in an email about Shaky Shivers. I've not read this yet. Instead of waiting, let's just talk about it now. Sounds good. So you're watching Shaky Shivers. Well, he says, what up, fam? Like he always does. But then he says, so you're up, watching Wes? Shaky Shivers, huh? I'm curious to see what you thought of it. I'm not. I'm going to spoil our opinion, so don't read this if you haven't already watched it or want to discuss it with each other first. So perfect timing. Mrs. Wes and I saw it a year ago when Fandango was doing a month of indie horror movies across the country. This is one of the films, like for a one or two night event, we talked about it a little bit earlier. It's yep. like he doesn't even listen. So we drove across town to watch it in an actual theater with about four other people. There was even a very lovely video before the movie of Sung talking about the campy horror movies he loved as a kid. Now this was supposed to be a love letter to that. It was very touching. Makes sense. Yep. I'm a big Sung Kang fan, and I've been following this movie since he announced it a few years ago. I was really excited for his first film as a director, and he seemed excited to be working on it. With that in mind, we were both pretty underwhelmed, to put it mildly. I genuinely think there's some decent potential and some good moments and ideas, but the script was bad overall, so even with some moments of good acting and directing, I don't think it was salvageable. There was also just too much going on. Werewolves and zombies and Bigfoot and witches, it was too much. I love Song and, and want him... You forgot about the cults, too. Cults. cults and spells. Mm-hmm. And magic books. And ice cream. I want him to continue doing stuff he loves, and I'm excited for him to do the initial D movie, which is why I was so disappointed with this. I think most of the issues can be blamed on the script and budget, which, again, no idea what the budget is, and the script was written by two guys who never wrote a movie before, as far as I can tell. 
but at the end of the day, great things have been made with less money and ultimately he chose the project in the script. I hope he takes what he learned from making this and is able to apply it to Initial D. I imagine with a slightly higher profile project, he'll have more help and resources to really make it how he wants. Yes. I also feel like I know his personality pretty well. I've listened to every episode of both his podcasts and watched at least most, of, most if not all, of his YouTube content, and I'm about 80% certain he created the character he plays at the end and put him in the movie just for fun. He's a very sweet and well-intentioned guy, but his sense of humor can be pretty juvenile. His cameo was not exactly a highlight for me. Can't no. wait to hear what you guys thought. Stay furious, Wes. Well, Wes, I think you've heard that we have pretty much very similar thoughts although I am slightly more optimistic on the film than you seem to be. I don't think that, like, I mean, we know West well enough now, but, like, imagine if West was just like, and my favorite part of the movie was Sung Kang's cameo. That accent he did was hilarious. I uh, love when people make fun of themselves. Yes. Or their people. Ethnically. Ethnically, yeah. yeah. Ethnically make fun of themselves. That always works really well. Um, do you have other thoughts about Shaky Shivers? Um, let's see through my notes. Oh, there were some cool cars in the movie. What was in the movie? Uh, somebody's, oh, I think maybe Roger, oh, yeah, you're right, Roger might just be driving a Civic at mm -hmm. some point. Like, they have, like, a Fast and Furious Civic, and there's, like, some old cars and stuff like that. Sun King definitely likes cars and put some cars that he thought were interesting to, visually interesting in the film. Oh, there was one quote I didn't read. Did I have this, or did I save it? Um, I'll save it for a little bit later, but he's basically just like, I think there's two different types of people who would watch this movie. It's Fast and Furious fans, and it's horror fans. Okay. And he says that he was, and I'll read the full quote later for a reason, I'll read it a little bit later, but he says, like, he was embraced by the horror community. Like, he's like, these people get it, they love it, they want to see the same movies as me. And I feel like that's, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, but I'm also just like, there's there's a type of a horror movie fan who anytime people make a movie that, like, reminds them of their childhood, they're like, this movie's great, you gotta love this movie. It's just like, no, you don't. Okay. See, I'm not I'm not lost in the sauce enough to know this, but yes. But it's just like, a, oh, this is so good. It's just like, mm. It reminds me so much of this and this and this and this. And you're like, yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. But I do want to shout out Cassie Wilson, Nick Burris, Alex Allen, and Justin Kleiman, and Brian Rodriguez of High School Slumber Ooh. Party. Wes Hampton, who just wrote in. Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden Renato, G. Donato, Michael McGann, Lane Middleton, Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton. How did I mess up my own name? Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton of the Kings of Sport, Jason Rainey, Tom Price, Mike Gallier, Josh Buckley of Whole Lot of yep. Wolves, Michael Moser, Christian Larson, Tara New One, Aaron Willows, and Natalie Absolute, Randy Carter, Josh Goularm, Alex Walsh, and Jessica Collins, a.k.a. Mon Tez. Thank you all for supporting us at the $5 a month level or above. If you want to get your name on that list, go to TooFast2Forever.com. More info there. But that's our Patreon page. Lots of good stuff. But thank you to all of you for supporting us there. Joe, let us watch the trailer for Shaky Shivers. So this trailer posted a year ago. Shaky Shivers official trailer exclusively in theaters September 21st. So this is what they show. This is like the Fathom Events one night only trailer. Okay. I have it queued up. I'm ready to go when you are, brother. All right. Three, two, one, play. Bloody disgusting. Screen box right. original. What happened last night? Okay. Full moon. <laughs> see, blast them. Okay, so we see that in the movie, yeah, because it's the first minute. I killed Eric. So you don't remember yep. anything from last night? The last thing I remember is that you shot Eric, and then I just... There's also something like, so, like, she shows, like, a sort of a surprising amount of skin in a way that I was just like, is this movie for kids or not for kids? Like, she's not, like, naked, but it's like... Yeah, yeah. It's, like, kind of, like, suggestive in a way that I didn't feel like a kid's movie would be. Jesus. What? You just lost more. This is bull****. You really want to go? Okay. We don't have any other option. Transfusion. How far will you go? No. This is dumb, because we're not going to find... Spells. Mm-hmm. Pretty terrible. That actor was in um, Blockers, formerly Cock Blockers. Oh, yeah. He's one of the kids, I think, that's, like, trying to sleep with one of John Cena's daughters or whatever. Oh, okay. I thought he was pretty good, though, in, like, his, like, one or two scenes. He's, he's, uh, he's great value Jonah Hill. Yeah. You 
guys are so silly. This this trailer really rockets you through the movie. Directed by the Asian guy from the Fast and Furious. Uh, okay. uh, it's right there in the trailer, man. No. You can live. I got it. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty bad. No, the trailer's fine. It, like, no, it's, no, no, no. I was saying it's, the pretty it's... bad thing about the, the Asian guy. I was trying to so give him the benefit of the doubt somehow that I couldn't find with him being the director and then him throwing that into the trailer. Sun Kang, we like you for more than being the Asian guy, bud. That's that's all I want to say. Get, get your. I hope that you're okay with with your own internal struggles, but you're more than just the Asian guy to us. So don't sell yourself as the Asian guy from The Fast and the Furious, please. Most, the biggest issue I have with this movie that I've not mentioned already, and this is very, very hard, and this is not cheap, it's difficult, and it's expensive, is the movie does not look like it's from the 80s. It looks like it was shot in 2022. That's true. Like, there's no work on the coloring or the film degradation or anything. And, like, I don't want, like, there is... a around when Grindhouse came out, there were a bunch of movies that were like, we're going to do the same thing with like, just shit. It's just like, I don't want like shitty, but just like, if you're going to make a thing that's like set in 93, about the 80s, blah, 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 blah. Don't make it look like you're just like a bunch of kids out, like making a college movie today. Fair. That's a good point. But it, I mean, again, it's really hard to do. It's really expensive to do right. Yeah, but I'm still. sure. But you know, okay. Okay. Mad Max Fury Road, 2.2 million people have logged oh, God. this on Letterboxd. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Shaky Shivers, 2022, directed by yeah. Sun Kang, starring Brooke Markham, who plays Lucy, Vivi, nu- Vivi Wen, who plays Karen, and Jimmy Ballinger, who plays Eric, has been seen by how many people? Is Can I ask you a question to start? Unprecedented, but I will allow it. Is it under 1,000? No. Okay, good. Then I'm way off, and I'm happy about this. Uh, give me. What was your What was your gut? What was your guess going to be? In the four hundreds. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm all. Am I surprised it's over a thousand? I'm surprised it's over a thousand. But it's that's in, why it's that's on what... prime. Okay. And I also I do feel like this is probably like, I don't know. Like I think there's horror people. Like there's a lot of horror people on Letterbox. I think there's also Fast and Furious fans. But I also think it's like if it's on Prime, you watch a vampire movie a werewolf movie whatever it's like hey you want to watch this I'm like all right yeah 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 i agree um i still don't think it's that high I, give me 2500 to start you are too high okay yeah there we go um 1400 I'll very combine. close 1322 okay average rating of a 2.8 most common a three then a two and a half then a two then a three and a half how many of those 1322 have in their top four favorite films of all time if it's more than two, I'll shit myself. So what's your guess? Two? Two. Too high. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One. Too high. Zero. You nice. got zero people. We have not we had, had zero, zero in a while. We have not had a zero in a while. So we're going to go to Eden of all trades. I almost, I almost uh, Florida stated myself there. Did you, do you know this whole story, Joey? No. Okay, so week one, Florida State, I think, was playing like Vanderbilt or something like that. And this kid tweets... If Florida State loses to Vanderbilt, I will eat dog shit. And they lost to Vanderbilt. And so the kid had to delete his Twitter because everybody's like, you got to eat the shit now. <sighs> Wait, so Florida State has been continue. They're like one in six or something, right? They were sup- they were like ranked like in the top 10 to start the season okay. of the A peoples. So then like a week ago or like two weeks ago, somebody goes like, that's it. If Florida State loses to this team... I'm going to eat dog shit to cover for the guy that said he'd eat dog shit. And they lost to that team too. And that guy disappeared. So, so the Florida state's in like the curse of the dog shit. I almost dog shit cursed myself by saying, if it's more than two, I'm going to shit myself. You know, you could have just, if you shit yourself one day, a few years from now, you would have owned an ice cream shop and made your own shaky shiver. It's true. Would have been on brand for this movie. It would have been very on brand for this movie. Good. Good way to loop it back. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to Eden of all trades because Eden gave it five stars. When I can't find somebody who has it in their top four, got to go to someone who has it in their top, uh, gave it five stars. So Eden exactly. yeah. watched it last October somehow. 
two chaotic dumbasses trying to deal with werewolves, zombies, and a Karen trying to use a coupon for free ice cream that expired in the 1980s. You know, there's a character named Karen. She's talking about another Karen, stereotypical Karen. Yes. Another character, Karen. Yes. Five stars. Okay. And in January, Eden rewatches it and says, this movie was tailor-made for me and my friend. Five stars. Okay, this is hitting for this is hitting for Eden. Okay. So Eden, who I guess is a Das Racist fan because her location is combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, so that's good. Her top four are, I would say two are overtly horror movies. One is horror, well, no, I guess three are horror movies, and one is like someone who likes horror movies would also like this. What is one of the biggest, this is, okay, so the non-horror movie, because again, Shaky Shiver's not in the top four, so we have the four, four movies to guess. Okay, four movies to guess. Not a horror movie. The only one that's not a horror movie. What's a movie that came out this year, a really big movie that came out this year, that someone who loves horror movies would also like, but not a horror movie? Big horror movie came out this year. No, not a horror movie, though. Just a big movie. No, big, yeah, big non-horror movie that somebody that likes Just think, like, horror. the year's biggest movies. Someone who loves horror movies also loves... Some sci-fi movie? Alien Romulus. What? Nope. Got to go more basic taste than that. A uh, huge movie this year. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I am so bad. It's at the number movies. two movie of the year, box office wise, behind Inside Out. What's the most basic? I mean, it's, it's a, a thing that you and I both like. But what's the most basic movie taste imaginable today? Blockbusters. And then more specifically, superhero movies. Mm-hmm. Which superhero movie came out this year? Mm-hmm. Which one? I don't know which one came out this year. Let me this think. one. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the penguin. The star of this is in Hobbs and Shaw. The star of this one's in Hobbs and Shaw. Ryan Reynolds, mm-hmm. Deadpool, and Wolverine. There you go. Okay, I got there. Eden's number two favorite movie of the of all time is Deadpool and Wolverine. Okay. okay. Number three is a movie I don't think you've seen. You might have. It's a movie that Margaret and I were going to watch because it's set in the Parisian catacombs. Oh, no, I don't know. What is the movie? As Above, So Below. Nope, would have never got that one. I've never seen that she likes it. It's starring... Oh, actually, I thought other people were in it, but no. There's nobody I know in it, but supposedly a very good movie. It's set in the Parisian catacombs, which we did not go to. We'll talk about that in a couple weeks. Cool. That's number three. Number four is an installment in probably my favorite horror franchise. And it was the first of two reboots. Oh, I don't know what your favorite horror franchise is, bud. First of two reboots. Yep. Uh, is it Halloween? Mm-mm. What's your favorite horror franchise? Friday the 13th? Mm-mm. Which one? Which one? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-mm. Hmm. Two reboots. In There's this been horror. six of these movies. And another one is currently Scream? being made. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Uh, what, which... what do you know? Do you know the? I didn't know Scream was your favorite. Scream's Rachel's favorite too. Do you know the first reboot number? Four is the Four. first reboot. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they're all like reboot and requels, and there's not ever yeah, really movie rebooting, of it, but there were three the together, and then there was one, and then there were two more. Yeah. I like Scream a lot. I'm excited for the new Scream too, as well. Jenna Ortega's back, right? We just no. saw that. Oh, no, it's the other way around. Jen Ortega is the only one not back. The well, other no, girl they fired back. Melissa Barrera, who's her older sister, because she spoke up about Palestine. And That's right. Like, Rachel told me this. Yes. And then Jen Ortega is like, oh, uh, I have other stuff to do. I can't be back. And it's like, I, f- I feel like it was her being like, well, don't sabotage her career way of saying I side with Melissa Barrera is my guess. But Okay. Number one is a movie that Mike and Dan just covered. A movie that John and I covered on 1999 on the podcast. Okay. A movie that I would not call horror, but I think is horror. A universal horror movie, universal monster movie from 1999. Very popular. Also rebooted. Godzilla. No, he's not universal. Is he universal? I don't know. What the fuck studio is universal? That might be universal. But no, he's not a a universal monster. This movie, later sequels to this movie, star one of the stars of the Fast and Furious franchise. Weird. Okay. Okay. I think he was in maybe two and three, or maybe just two, or maybe just three. Okay. It was rebooted a handful of years ago with Tom Cruise, as they tried to reboot the entire Dark Universe. Oh, I don't know. 
I was gonna say War of the Worlds. Mm-mm, not a universal heart. You know, not a universal yeah. monster movie. Plus, I would have said Channing Tatum's best role. And yeah, and I would have said Cloverfield before that. Tagline for this movie, which should give it away if you know it: "The sands will rise, the heavens will part, the power will be unleashed." It's, uh, Sandman. No. What Get is close? It? Scorpion S- King. Mm, what is that a sequel to? The Mummy? The Mummy. Okay, okay, okay. Good. So The Mummy... I don't think The Mummy's like a horror movie, but yes, you're right. It is it a horror is. movie. I, it that's is. That's what I was saying. Like, it's two in the yeah. one Jason, but it is, it's, it's a horror movie. You're um, right. The Mummy, Deadpool and Wolverine, As Above, So Below, Scream 4. And also, somewhere close, Shaky Shivers. Okay, that was a fun one. Good choice. You did shout excellent. Shout out to Eden of all trades for that. Shout out to Wes for writing in, and shout out to Sun Kang for making this movie. Yeah, good job, bud. I, I like you... For being the attractive guy from Fast and the Furious. No, the Asian guy. Yeah, I know. But also, yeah. Imagine be like the guy with the good hair. Easily works. The guy with the only guy with hair. It also works. But no. Or you could or you could even poke fun at yourself and be like that one guy from Fast and the Furious. You know what I mean? Like to be like, oh, I'm a no name in the list. Any option that you wanted that mm. wasn't that wasn't hand in hand with the character you chose to play at the end of your movie joe next week starts lap 15 fucking a let's but, do it brother what you fucked up last week you did not have your homework done oh shit i did it today oh fuck i had left the <laughs> list at work i have a list i have a handwritten list i left it at work and i meant Failed to take a the picture of again. it all right it makes wait, more wait. sense to do it next week anyway okay let's do it next week i i, I even was like i'm gonna take a picture you said of this to me in today, my phone the only reason i brought it up is because you said i did it I did do it. I have it. I have it, and I have, like, reasonings with it. I wrote it down, and I was like, oh, I set this piece of paper down. Well, my day of work was fucking weird, but I was like, I'm going to take a picture of this because even if I forget this piece of paper, I'll have the picture when I go home. I did neither of those things. I will be back next week with my rankings, which are done. They are, as Joey I told him, and I could send you guys a picture tomorrow. No, don't send the picture. That's going to spoil the episode. Exactly. Um, it will be Fast and the Furious movies ranked from the least 80s to the most 80s, according to me, the definitive premiere and dedicated list of those movies. So it means Lap 15 is going to have two sets of your rankings. It's going to have these and also your real rankings at the end. Yeah, that'll be fun. Joe, any final thoughts in this episode before we pack it up and say goodbye? No, I'm glad we watched this, though. It was fun during spoopy season. If you haven't watched it yet, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Doesn't matter either way. I will say that in two or three weeks, um, Red Notice is coming out. Movie looks oh. real bad. We're or Red One, Red One, not Red Notice. Red One. Uh, movie looks real bad. We're not going to. You were like, maybe we'll cover it in November. We're going to wait till Christmas. We're doing it for Christmas. We're going to make sure we see it. But like, I'm not like going out of our way to make sure we see Red One on Amazon Prime. Is it? I thought it was on Netflix. It's it might on be on Amazon Netflix. Pri- it's it on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Either way, it looks real bad. I Does agree not look with good. you. No, well, The Rock didn't show up for a year and a half, remember? So, mm-hmm. oh, I remember. Yeah. For all things too fast, too forever, go to cageclub.me, facebook.com slash too fast, too forever, or at too fast, too forever on all the socials. Email us, family at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at too fast, too forever.com in our store at cageclub.me slash shop. And come back next week as we kick off lap 15. The oops, we should have covered that already. Lap with Brian Rodriguez. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. And we will tell you all about it when we see you again. <laughs>